Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. It's an extraordinary day today. We have Gavin Menzies, the author of 1421, The Year China Discovered America, and also the author of 1434, How the Chinese Were Behind the Renaissance in Europe. Gavin Menzies, you are rocking the boat of history. Thank you very much. <laughs> you are rocking the boat of history and everything we've all been taught and told, been indoctrinated to accept, may be in question. Well, I hope so. Welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. Well, thank you for inviting me on the show. This was such an exciting book to read. It reads very much like you're there. You're actually there. Who taught you how to write like this? This is like initiatory writing where you go into the time that you're describing. Well, I'm afraid you're being very flattering. I don't think anyone taught me to write. I left school when I was 15, so I never really learned. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a lot of hope for people that have left school that can write so poignantly and elegantly. It really reads easily. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. The first question I want to ask you as an explorer is, what happened to you personally when you began to discover that the information that we have accepted as a fact about the discovery of America may not be true? Right. Well, my discovery was a complete accident. I didn't set out to prove anything or disprove anything. Um, my wife and I went to Beijing in 1990 to celebrate 25 years of living together. And um, we got there on New Year's Eve, uh, which was just a coincidence, and there was a wonderful uh, display in the Forbidden City. It was a very beautiful, cold evening. And there were fireworks and goodness knows what else, because it was New Year's Eve. And at the end of the show, I, I asked our guide when was this forbidden city completed and she said it was completed on new year's eve 1421 and this came as a surprise to me because uh i'd been up to the great wall that afternoon and that was also completed in 1421 so i said well this is very strange there are lots of things seem to be completed in 1421 uh, tell me why and she said well basically i don't know but i can tell you that the emperor uh, wanted to build all these projects, and he sent, having done so, he sent a fleet of ships all around the world to bring kings and princes back to Beijing for the inauguration of this forbidden city uh, on New Year's Day, 1421. Now, I thought this was a very odd thing. When I got back to England, I decided to find out what was happening at the same month in England, in February 1421. So I went down to the local library and museum and records office in the city of London and I found that it was a very important day in English history because the king Henry V had decided he'd bring the hundred years war to an end by marrying the French princess Catherine of Valois and she was to be crowned in February 1421 in Westminster Cathedral and will become uh, sorry Westminster Abbey would become queen of England and their son would or daughter would become king or queen of France and England and that would end the war so I could compare what was going on at exactly the same time in London and in Beijing. And I found there was a huge disparity between the two. In Beijing, the emperor entertained 26,000 guests, and they had an enormously lavish banquet. In London, uh, the country was so poor, 600 guests only were invited to the coronation of Queen Catherine. And they only had one course, which was dried fish. They had no plates. Uh, they ate off stale bread, which served as plates, whereas in Beijing, they ate off the most magnificent imperial blue and white plates. Now, what I did then is I spent some time comparing what was going on in uh, China and in London and also what was going on around the world on that same, uh, in that same month, February 1421. And I spent, in the end, nearly 10 years uh, putting together a book. And at the end of 10 years, I had one which was saleable. And I got a very good literary agent called Luigi Bonomi. And he sold it. And he sold it to a small, reputable publisher. 
who decided before it was published they would like it checked by a lot of historians. So we sent the book out in draft to a number of historians. And one of them said to me, do you know we have a map in our collection? And it was drawn up in 1421, and it shows islands in the Caribbean, or we think it does. What do you think? So I went along and had a look at it. And I saw to my amazement this map, which was drawn in 1421, published in 1424, uh, had accurately drawn Puerto Rico and Guadalupe in the Caribbean. Now, this was extraordinary because it was 70 years before Columbus. And so I realized that somebody had been in the Caribbean 70 years before Columbus and had accurately charted these islands, which was an astounding story. And that's how it all started. It was all an accident. Were you both excited and nervous a little bit about the implications of running with that discovery? I, I was, very much so, because I wasn't a historian, and I thought, this really can't be true. Now, what I did was, I was sure it was the Portuguese who'd made a secret voyage to the Caribbean 70 years before Columbus, so I told the Portuguese ambassador, and he kindly invited me to meet the keeper of the archives in Lisbon, and we went down there, and we found that the Portuguese hadn't any idea about these islands, where they were accurately, but they knew that there were islands in the Caribbean because um, their crown prince, Dom Pedro, had brought back to Portugal uh, in 1428 uh, a map which showed the whole world according to the Portuguese claims. So this was even more incredible. The Portuguese were claiming that in 1428 they had a world map which showed South America as what we call the Straits of Magellan now in the West, and in the East, it showed the Indies and China and so on. So by this stage, I was absolutely astounded. And I thought, well, nobody's going to believe me. So what I'll do is I'll try and find this map. I instigated a search. And I, I just couldn't find it anywhere. So then what I did, um, I decided to look at the logs of Christopher Columbus and Magellan uh, and the other great explorers and see whether, in fact, they they did have maps showing them the way to their destinations. I thought if there was a world map which the Portuguese king owned and it did show the Americas, then sure as anything, Columbus would have a copy and so would Magellan uh, and so would de Gama and so on. Well, I started searching their logs and, and diaries and I found very quickly that each of these great explorers, that is Columbus uh, and Magellan, de Gama, Cabral, Diaz, and Captain Cook, every single one of them accepted they had a map. Columbus accepted he had a map showing him the way to the Americas. And in fact, he had a, a semi-mutiny on the way over. And to quash it, he said to his crew, look, I know where I'm going because I've got a map. And here it is. And he sent it over to his fellow captain in, in the other ship. And exactly the same with Magellan. He had a mutiny when he got down to South America. And he quashed the mutiny by telling his sailors that before he set sail, he, he had seen in the King of Portugal's library a map which showed the straits uh, which he was traveling through. What does that mean, do though? The same with Cabral, with Diaz, with Captain Cook. Each one of them had a map. So when I found that out, I knew I was on home ground. But what does that mean? I'm sorry, I just wanted to go back a little bit. Yeah, what would sure. that mean for the listeners? What would that mean if they had a map? Was it well, a real map? It, was it a map that they made? Was it a map of the Chinese? I mean, It was a map which they were given. For example, Columbus had a map which showed the islands in the Caribbean. Now, the implication are that if you have a map, obviously, you haven't, you know, you kn the place is already known. So Columbus couldn't claim that he discovered America because he had a map of the islands which he was looking for. Um, which showed in the way to the Americas. And in fact, since, since my book's come out,